Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating the function sine x divided by the quantity sine x plus cosine x dx. So how do you integrate this type of function? Well, you can use substitution. Let's call sine x equals u. Then we're going to be getting cosine x dx as du. So that's not going to help. How about we say, okay, let u equals cosine x. Then from here, we're going to get du equals negative sine x dx. So we kind of got the sine x dx there. So that would be negative du. And at the bottom, you have sine x plus cosine x. Okay, u is cosine x, but what is sine x? Well, sine x, you could probably write it as the square root of 1 minus u squared. And then you're going to get something like this. u plus the square root of 1 minus u squared. Okay, is this easy to integrate? Well, it depends. You could probably multiply and divide by the conjugate. u squared minus 1 minus u squared the u squared is not going to cancel out. So that's not really going to give us something nice. So let's go ahead and use different approaches. Well, another approach might be to use the wire stress substitution. That is usually used with integrals of this kind where you have a function of sine x and cosine x, especially with, you know, ex uh, rational expressions like this one. It will be helpful. So we start by calling t equals tangent x over 2. And then from here, we can evaluate x over 2 as 10 inverse of t. And then we can divide, I mean, multiply both sides by 2. And then from here, we can find the dx as 2 dt over 1 plus t squared. And then you can draw a right triangle, find the sine x, cosine x, so on and so forth. But we usually proceed by finding the tangent x from here, which is from the double angle formula. Remember, we used this in a previous video as well. To, well, not it wasn't the previous, but the one before that, I believe, is the, the one with the tangent 13 and 14. 2t divided by 1 minus t squared. And if you draw a right triangle, we get 2t, 1 minus t squared, and then 1 plus t squared from Pythagorean theorem. And then put it all together, replace sine x, cosine x with whatever they are, so on and so forth. Well, this is a little painful, and it's not that elegant. So I'm going to show you a different method. And this method is actually really cool because it uses a really interesting idea. So let's go ahead and start by calling our integral i1. i for integral, so I'm going to call this i1 sine x over sine x plus cosine x dx. And then I'm going to define another integral, which is like a counterpart, and that's going to be i2. And i2 is going to be the integral of cosine x divided by sine x plus cosine x dx. Hopefully you start seeing what I'm going to do. I'm going to be putting these together. Why? Because if you go ahead and add these two integrals, you're going to get sine x plus cosine x divided by sine x plus cosine x, which is 1. Great. So let's proceed. i1 plus i2 is going to be then, since I can add those integrals, sine x plus cosine x because they have the same denominator. So I can just write them with a common denominator like this. And obviously, this is going to be 1 dx. And 1 dx is probably one of the easiest functions, one of the easiest, maybe the easiest function to integrate. And what is the integral of 1? So you're looking for a function whose derivative is 1. So its antiderivative is going to be x. But we're just going to add a constant so that we don't lose points on the test, right? Because our teacher always says you have to add the constant. Okay. So now we have this uh, i1 plus i2, but I'm looking for i1. So where does this i2 come from, right? So I need to be able to find another equation with i1 and i2 so that I can solve for i1 because that's my goal, right? So how do I do that? Well, if you look at i1 and i2 carefully, you're going to notice that I have sine x plus cosine x at the bottom. What is the derivative of sine x plus cosine x? And why am I saying that? You'll see in a little bit why I'm talking about the derivative of the denominator. But if you differentiate sine x plus cosine x, you get cosine x minus sine x. Does that tell you something? Yes, it should. So now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract i2 minus i1. And that is going to give us cosine x minus sine x over sine x plus cosine x dx. Why? Because I can just subtract them, right? This is cosine x. I have a numerator. I have another numerator. And then I have a common denominator. So I can just go ahead and subtract them and write with the common denominator. 
Great. So now I got I1 plus I2, and I got I2 minus I1. So hopefully by solving this as a system, I can find I1 from here. But how do you evaluate I2 minus I1? Well, here's the thing. Remember, we talked about the derivative of the denominator. There was a reason for that because we're going to use the u substitution. And you know that I love u substitution. So this is going to be called u. So u can do it. u equals sine x plus cosine x. And this implies du equals cosine x, the derivative of sine x, minus sine x, which is the derivative of cosine x, multiplied by dx. You know how to find du, right? You take the derivative and multiply by dx because our function is a function of dx. Great. So what is that going to give you? Well, I got the numerator, I got the denominator, everything looks good. So i2 minus i1 can be written as du over u. Okay. How do you integrate 1 over u du? It's ln, right? The natural logarithm. I know some people write it as log, but I use log for base 10. I use ln for natural logarithm. So this is going to be ln absolute value of u plus c2. I want to use a different constant because they don't have to be the same. But what is u? Let's back substitute. So from here, i2 minus i1 is going to equal ln absolute value of u, which is sine x plus cosine x. As you know, this can be negative on some interval. So let's leave it at absolute value and write it like this. Great. Now I got i2 minus i1 and I have i1 minus i2. I mean i1 plus i2. Sorry about that. So i1 plus i2, I found it to be from here x plus c1. Great. That was a very easy integral. So this is x plus c1. So what am I going to do with these two equations? Well, my goal is to evaluate i1. Remember, that's our original integral. i2 is something that we invented, right? We wanted to use it so that they could go well together. So I need to solve for i1. So how would you solve for i1? This is a system of equations, right? We have no longer have integrals, so this should be easy to solve. No more calculus. It's just algebra, algebra from now on. So since I'm trying to solve for i1, I would like to negate the first equation. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to multiply the first one by negative 1. And that's going to give me negative i2 plus i1 is equal to negative ln absolute value of sine x plus cosine x minus c2. Again, c2 is a constant, so if you want to call negative c2, c3, that's fine. We're going to do it at the end. So now I have i1 plus i2 as x plus c1. So now I can go ahead and add these two equations because that's going to eliminate i2 and I'm going to end up with i1. Great. So I get 2i1 equals x minus ln absolute value of sine x plus cosine x plus c1 minus c2. Since c1 and c2 are constants, we can take care of that, but let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2 first. So this is going to give me 1 half of x minus ln absolute value of sine x plus cosine x. And then the rest is going to be 1 half of c1 minus c2. c1 and c2 are constants. Therefore, c1 minus c2 and c1 minus c2 times 1 half is also a constant. So what I can do is I can just go ahead and call this a different constant like c3 or k or whatever you want and then from here I'm going to be getting my i1 as one half of the quantity x minus ln absolute value of sine x plus cosine x and then I'm going to be adding my c3 as my constant and this will bring us to the end of this video. Well thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.